Hi, now I've got an example here which is quite common. You'll see it on inverse matrices. It uses the principles of inverse matrices where you've got to work out the value of some variable. In this example, the value of k that you'll see in this matrix A and in its inverse. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, either fast forward just to check out your answer or take it slowly through where I'll give you the method and take you through the workings, okay? So welcome back then if you had a go. So what have you got to know in order to do this question? Well, you've got to remember that if you multiply a matrix A by its inverse or the other way around, then you would expect to get the identity matrix. I've got a note here, that is the identity matrix is 100, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we can pick up on this idea. I'm going to take the inverse matrix first, it's up to you, but I'll take the inverse matrix and multiply it by the matrix A. And I'm going to equate that to the identity matrix. So I've got something like this, okay? We've got the inverse matrix here multiplied by A and it gives us the identity matrix. Now what I'm looking for is to multiply this out and equate it with, say, an element in this matrix. And first of all, I'd want to find some line and column that contains a K in it. And I might be tempted to go for this first line here, okay, with this column here. And if I was to carry out that multiplication, I'll keep it in red, okay, we would therefore have minus 3 times 1, that gives us minus 3, and then we've got minus 3k times the minus k there, that's going to be plus 3k squared, and then minus 2 times the 1 gives us minus 2. It's going to all be over 7, so I'll put that all over 7, and by multiplying the first row with the first column, it would normally give me that element there, which will be the 1. So if I now simplify this by multiplying both sides by 7, adding 5, I end up with 3k squared equals 7 plus 5. In other words, 3k squared equals 12. Dividing by 3, I end up with k squared equaling 4. And taking the square root of both sides, I end up with k equaling plus or minus 2. But I've got to be careful here because it said find the value of k, not the values of k. So I've got two answers here. I need to find another equation so I can work simultaneously and check which one works for both equations. So taking another row, let's suppose I take this middle row here, that's got k's in, and look at, say, this end row here. If I do that, what do I end up with? Well, I've got 1 times k, which is k, and got k times minus 1, which is minus k, and then 3 times 0, well, that's 0. It's going to be all over 7, and this will give me this element here, a 0. Okay, that would be the second row, last column, second row, last column, that's 0. Well, this doesn't get me anywhere because if I multiply by 7, I get k minus k equals 0. Well, we end up with 0 equals 0. So that's no good. Well, I did that on purpose because I knew that it was going to give me that solution. What you're looking for is ideally a linear equation rather than a quadratic equation. And so if I look carefully, and maybe I could have chosen this one first of all, if I pick up, say, on this second row here, with, say, this second column here, 
Then that would give me this element in this position here, second row, second column. And by multiplying that out, I get 1 times 0, which is 0. And then k times the 1, which is k. And then 3 times the 3 there, which is 9. Put that all over 7. And that would give me the 1 that we've got here. And by multiplying both sides by 7, subtracting 9, I can see that we end up with k equaling minus 2. So, we had k equals plus or minus 2 here. We've got k equals minus 2 there. So therefore, the result that is consistent with all these equations is going to be k equals minus 2. And that's our value. So I hope that gives you an idea then on how to handle this type of question. I purposely made this example so that we would have a quadratic in here and also to demonstrate this idea where this particular equation goes nowhere. But if you're careful about this, you should be able to select a particular row and a line that gives you a linear equation, saves you time, and then you might be able to just get the value of k immediately. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again in another video.